What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode with me, Michael. <clears throat> Hope you guys are enjoying your week. Happy Tuesday. We're here back in the studio. Um, as you can see, before we go ahead and get started, I did make a few changes to the entire setup. Um, if you guys are on audio, obviously you can't hear. But if you guys are on uh, YouTube, you can see the change. I went ahead and added a few things, took away a few things. Uh, the first thing I did was I removed the table that was right here. So normally it's like right here. It's like uh, right underneath my nipples. I went ahead, completely removed that setup. And now I have it set up just so. So I have a, I went from a regular size table to a coffee table. And I'm sitting on a baseball stool. So it's a little tiny stool. <clears throat> um, the reason why I did that is because it just, I feel like I can move around easier. I feel like I can talk easier. I feel like I can express myself a little bit better because I'm not as, uh, claustrophobic around a table. Um, and everything's much more open. So I went ahead and did that. I'm also using this brand new mic bar, which is a blue, it's a blue something, but it's the top arm on the market. Went ahead and bought that. Um, this is actually the new mic too. Same type of mic, uh, just a different, just using the newer one. Um, right over here is my old setup. As you can tell right here, I have the Rode arm and then I have the other mic. So this is going to be used when I have guests on. So <clears throat> in addition to that, I'm also in the process of developing, not developing, but getting a table, a real nice table, a custom craft table um, that I'm making with uh, my girlfriend and my father. So we're putting that together right now. And that's going to be like a quarter setup table. And the way I'm going to have it is it's going to be here and it's going to be set up in a way that the guest and I can both look at you when we're talking. Um, but at the same exact time, I can still be in the corner as we're doing the podcast. A uh, few things, as you can tell already, um, this is going to be the setup from now to whenever I get out of this, this, uh, my bedroom, which I'm hoping is relatively sooner than later. Hopefully it's within like the next year to year and a half. I'm actually going to have my own office space um, where I can do my own shows in my own room. I can have as many people as I, over as I want to shoot and record a podcast. Um, I want it to be in a situation, a place where the guest feels comfortable, I feel comfortable, and everybody, um, everybody who comes in feels comfortable. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> so it was a good weekend. I hope you guys had a good weekend. So that's just a few updates. I just wanted to run over everything that I have going on with the podcast. Um, that's about it. Um, in addition to that, I just want to once again, let everyone know, um, thank you for continuing to support the podcast. Um, the support is extraordinary. This month is going to be better than last month. Uh, if you want to go ahead and leave it a review, like comment, subscribe, um, all that helps the podcast out a lot especially on YouTube, if you want to like it, that uh, really does push it up in the algorithm and gets the name out there and gets the show out there to more people to watch. But a um, few things I wanted to talk about real quick. Uh, a few things on Netflix. So I was last week, I was um, just browsing around on Netflix and a few documentaries I think people should watch, a few that I watched that I thoroughly enjoyed. Um Pull them up right here. <clears throat> Taco Chronicles. No, that's not it. Not Taco Chronicles. I don't think it's Taco Chronicles. Maybe it is. There's a show on Netflix called Taco Co Taco Chronicles. 
and it goes over the history of tacos. And it's it was one that when I first started watching, I didn't really I was kind of just joking around. Um, but as I started to watch it, it was really it's really interesting because for for me, when it comes to food, I find food to be super uh, super. It's it's a close relationship I have with food uh, for many reasons. A lot of it is unhealthy reasons. But also, I was listening to a podcast with uh, Anthony Bourdain and uh, Joe Rogan, and he was talking about, Bourdain was talking about how food is like a one-way ticket to become part of somebody's custom, to become par- part of someone's culture. And I don't think, I don't think I've ever think about it, but if you travel, you go somewhere new, and you want to be part of the society, you want to be as close to the people as you possibly can. There's so many ways that you could do it that just aren't as efficient. But if you can sit down around a table, share dinner with somebody, enjoy, you know, their local alcohol beverage, you can become best friends with, not best friends, but you can become acquaintances with them as quick as possible. And I find that beautiful. And um, I started thinking about the U.S. and we don't really have culture with food, right? Our food is literally just taken from across the world. We don't have any traditional food. The hamburger, maybe, is the most traditional food we have, French fries. But we don't have a deep, rich culture. So I was watching this taco documentary, and it's really interesting how certain tacos in Mexico are have a completely different um, feeling towards them. People feel a completely different way about them. There was like these little tiny tacos where it's like a shell and it's like a big stone circle and there's like a bowl and on the outside, so on the inside of the bowl, but on the outside of rim, there's like a little, uh, a uh, little, um, remote or not a remote, a, uh, a, there's a moat, <laughs> remote. there's a moat that goes on the outside and this is where they put all the, uh, vegetables and they put all the chicken and all like the the toppings for the taco, onions and all that good stuff. And in the middle, they put all the the, the meat and they cook down the meat. And you know, midnight to four o'clock in the morning, twenty four hours a day. Uh, when people get off work in Mexico City, they just have these like cute little not these cute but like these taco stands just throughout the whole country where people just come in and or throughout the whole city where people just get off work. They have a taco and they just, it's part of the culture, right? It's like New York City and the way New York City has like pizza slices, right? It's just part of the whole, the, the custom of being a Mexican in Mexico City. I found it super fascinating. They were saying stuff how it's a male dominated field because in the evening, the women don't go out. It's part of the culture. And it's a safety thing, too. In Mexico City, you just don't go out after a certain time if you're a woman. Um, so they took, like, these these two other women who actually have their own taco stand. And they do the, their own taco stand. And it's it was just really fascinating. And then they went to, like, um, southern part of – southern part of – I think it was southern part of Mexico. <clears throat> the Yucatan. They went to the Yucatan. Uh, Mexico. Got to figure out what the name is. Traditional Yucatan. Traditional taco. I think it says the C. Yeah, there it is. It is undeniably the taco. Taco de Cochinatia Pibel. Bill, it's not, it's not like such a freaking gringo. Um, but they have these tacos called uh, cochinita tacos, and what it is, it's 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 a lot different. You know, you move to a different part of Mexico, and you go from this fast-paced city life, street tacos. You know, just get the shell, get some meat, scoop up some fat, and you eat it. And you do four or five at a time. They're two bites, and then you travel just to a different region of Mexico, and you run into this. Uh, this taco called a cochinita taco. And what the cochinita taco is, instead of just cooking meat super duper quick on a stovetop, serving it to people left and right, they actually build these like underground ovens. So they take these, 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 uh, they show 
this farmer, these farmers raising these pigs, and these pigs are so healthy. Like, they're living such a happy life. They're not getting shot up with steroids. They're not being treated like shit. You know, they have the most, the, the highest quality meat that you can get. They have the highest quality everything you could possibly get. And these pigs are just running around. And then they eventually get slaughtered. But before they get slaughtered, they're super healthy, right? <clears throat> they treat these uh, pigs like, like they're family. And then they eventually end up killing these pigs. But th- what they do is they take these pigs and they, 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 they roast these pigs under like this, this underground tunnel. Or like this underground oven. And it smokes for like hours on end. And it's like a ritual of, of these tacos. And it's just, I don't know, it's super fascinating. I've always been interested in food. And I just saw this documentary. I think it's, I think it's one that a lot of people like. It just, uh, I don't know. I think it's something that Americans don't really think of. We don't really think of food in like that beautiful bring everyone together way. We kind of just think about eating food out of uh, necessity. Bye-bye. But it's one uh that's one documentary I I highly suggest. It is all in Spanish, so there's a bunch of captions, so you got to continuously read it, which is fine. That's okay. Um but you can't be distracted. Uh that's one thing I I wanted to I wanted to touch on that real quick. So within these past like 2 weeks, I've uh I was on my phone a lot for a while there. And I was getting numbers, and I was like, holy shit, I'm on my phone way too much. It's, like, definitely not healthy. Like, it literally emptying my dopamine receptors. Like, my brain is just being shut off. Um, so I started doing this thing where I put my phone down. Like, if it's the weekend and I don't work, I put my phone away from, like, 4 p.m. to uh, until I go to bed. Uh, if I'm at work, when I get home from work, I put down my phone just for two hours before I go to bed. And it's completely changed. I think it's completely changed my mood. Um, I, I'm not worried about anything going on in the news, anything going on on social media. I think it's just I, social media is designed to keep you hooked and to keep you coming back. And it's not designed for you to come back with, you know, quality information. It's designed for you to get angry. It's designed for you to get frustrated. It's designed for you to continuously put out information that's just negative and it's, I think it, it does that. It does its job super well. And you have to just completely disconnect. You got to completely disconnect from uh, from that world. Um, I don't know. It's something that's helped, been helping me uh, tremendously. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Dog duties, dog dad duties. Um, yeah, had to go take the dog to the vet <clears throat> because that's a responsibility. Um, no shit, the Lakers won, right? Los Angeles is it's such a weird thing watching Los Angeles win everything. You know, first thing I want to say is people who don't like LeBron James are people that you don't need to be friends with. It's it, There's a certain personality trait to somebody who doesn't like LeBron James, right? It's it's just people who, they just, they, they're just upset with every single thing that happens. LeBron, LeBron James is the greatest, right? He's the greatest basketball player to play. I think he's, I mean, made behind Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, but I think he's the greatest. And when people are great at anything, they're also like the least liked per- person in the world. Los Angeles wins. I don't know how much they won by, but when I was watching, they were crushing. They were absolutely just dominating the entire game. But it's 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 weird because Los Angeles is a town that you wouldn't think is super talented at sports. Like historically, I don't I think the Lakers have historically been good, but like the Dodgers also, but I'm pretty sure they were like the Brooklyn Dodgers for a while. But it's just a super strange time to be a fan of sports because this idea of like, I don't know, especially in, in baseball, I always think of like a Northeastern team, like a New York Yankees or, you know, Boston Red Sox, uh, a team from just the colder areas, but like Miami, um, Tampa Bay, uh, 
Los Angeles Dodgers, it's it doesn't devalue the sport because all these players that they have, they're paying hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to. But it is kind of it's just a strange time to be a sports fan, especially with football. Like I don't know how football is going to pull it off this season. I mean, they have so many obstacles with like. Because when when you're when you're playing basketball, like especially this year in the NBA, the reason why the league was able to continue the entire time is because they rented out a huge bubble, and they just put players in there. And as they put players in there, they they don't have to. If if you can't leave, then Corona can't get in unless somebody sneaks out and someone gets Corona. But they were super. They were super uh, um, st- stingy. They're super stingy on the rules. Football is a completely different animal. You know, football, you're you're smashing each other's heads into each other. There's spit, there's blood coming out on everyone's body. You're touching everything on the field. Everyone's sweating all over the field. You're inside, you know. There's 55 players, I think, including the practice squad. There's 20s, there's you know, tens and tens of coaches. There's so many possibilities of people getting the sickness. You're traveling, you know, every week to a different city. Uh, some cities have fans. So if, if, if it's an airborne sickness, right? So if there's, you know, 25% capacity at 100,000, 80,000, let's say 80,000 seat stadium, there's 20,000 fans in there. 20,000 fans, I would say at least, you know, 1,000 and probably 500 of them already have COVID. They spread it to thousands and thousands of other people. Then they spread it to the players and then the players spread it to each other. And then during that game, there's going to be people getting COVID on the other team. Teams that play in a city, their home city is in a place where they don't allow fans at a game. And then they spread it to each other. And then they go back home. You know, they get back on the plane. All the interactions to get back on the plane, they spread it that way. They spread it to the family when they get home. I just, I don't see how the NFL is going to be able to make it through an entire season. I want it to, I, clearly I want it to happen. I love, there's something really romantic about being able to watch football again on Sunday. I don't know what it is. It just feels like some type of normal, normal, normalcy in the world is happening a little bit. Um, but it's, it's like the Titans, the Patriots. The Patriots one is weird because Cam Newton is the only player who got it. Like, what was he doing? And then I think one other player got it too. And then maybe one other person. It's weird, Los Angeles, you know, the Lakers win NBA final, of course. Los Angeles Dodgers beat the San Diego Padres pretty bad. They're probably going to end up winning the World Series too. You know, it's just, it's weird. It's a weird time to, uh, to, be, to be a sports fan. It's a great time to be a sports fan, actually. Taylor was at um, her, we went to Starbucks this past this past week, <laughs> and uh, this is a joke, by the way, what I'm about to say. But no, we did we actually did go to Starbucks, and um, I don't know if you remember, but like a couple years ago, there was a big push for uh, gender neutral bathrooms. Um, at my college, Towson, they have they have them. They have gender neutral bathrooms and I've <laughs> I think I might have talked about it before on the podcast but when I was going to school before coronavirus happened I would my schedule was 8 a.m to 3 p.m Tuesdays and Thursdays I would get to campus at 7 a.m and I would so I would park at like 6 45 in the morning I would drive down to I would park in the parking garage I would walk to the media building because the media building was the building that had these gender neutral bathrooms. And the advantage with the gender neutral bathrooms is that you could, they were one big pod. There was one toilet in there, no urinal. It was, which I don't think, I think you got to put a urinal in there if it's gender neutral, right? Because males need to pee on a wall. Um, Anyways, I would get there early. I would have my Wawa coffee. I would down two, Wawa sizzly sandwiches before I would even walk into the place. So I would have 800 to a thousand calories of just meat, cheese and eggs just inside of my body. Um, then I would drink a 24 ounce coffee. 
before I had the coffee, I would drink a Bang Energy drink on the way to. So I leave my house around 5.45, 6 o'clock. I would open up the night before I would get a Bang Energy drink. I would drink that as I'm driving to Wawa right outside of Towson or in Towson. So five minutes from campus, I would get myself a 24 ounce coffee, two for four um, breakfast sandwiches from Wawa. I would crush the breakfast sandwiches. I would crush 20 ounces of my coffee. Mind you, post bang energy drink. So I already, so now I have probably 400 to 500 milligrams of caffeine in my body. And so by the time I got to campus, it was like 645, 650. And my stomach is like boiling. Like it's, 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 it's bubbling. It's ready to go. It's ready to just launch it out of my body. So, so, so I park and I walk and it's a good walk. It's like a five minute walk. So I'm moving it around. It's flowing through my system. It's getting ready to just fly out. Um, <laughs> I get to the media building. I go inside, open right at seven o'clock. I put down my bags. I open the, I open the, I open the toilet. I, I take off my bag o- over my shoulder. I take it off. I put my jacket up. I get the toilet ready. I sit down. And the Wawa and the coffee and the Bang Energy drink in the early morning and just everything just f- just flows out of me like like the like taking a knife and slicing it across someone's femoral vein. That's dark. I didn't so I cra- like turning on a faucet just flies out of me. And at the point, I'm like, holy shit! I feel so bad after I flush, clean up, do everything brush my hands, wash my hands. Um, and I, 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 I turn the fan on, I get my, I get my, uh, my deodorant and I spray it in the air a little bit. And I, as I'm opening the bathroom, I open the bathroom and I look down the hallway and if there's nobody coming down the hallway, I'm like, holy shit, thank God. This is super embarrassing, but it's not, it's more, it's more, I'm more worried about the potential party. Like the next, the next person who has to, who has to experience what I just created from my artificial energy drinks, from my coffee, from my from my Wawa pancake McGriddle sandwich. Sometimes I would walk out and there would be a girl there, right? And I would look at her. I'd be like, you seem like a nice person. You don't know me, but you're going to hate me. You're going to hate me a lot. You don't know my name. You're not going to remember my face. But you're going to look at me, and every time you see me, you're going to think of just a disaster, just an earthquake, just a, a, a destruction of a human. And that is where I first was like, I don't know if gender-neutral bathrooms are a good idea because I don't think women produce what I produced. They, they might, but I don't, I'm just not sure. You know, and I think when we are talking about social issues, we have to think about the difference between men and women when it comes to our toiletry activities. When it comes to the bathroom, you got to realize, you women, you guys, you, you girls, you people, men, even men, you guys have to realize, you girls have to realize that if you go to a sporting events, if you go to a sporting event, if you go to a concert, you have a female bathroom. It is, there's doors. There's doors on every single toilet, right? You close the door, you open the door. Every woman has to sit down to pee, to shit, whatever it is. They all have to sit down. So by knowing that they all have to sit down, even if it's a pee, you respect your toilet. You clean your toilet. You take care of your toilet. You, you put a bird's nest around it so you take toilet paper and you put it around it. Um, so you take care of where you're going to be. Because there's a common courtesy for every single woman who has to take a shit or piss, right? When you walk into a man's bathroom, you have half, probably like 25% toilets. You have 75% piss pots, just urinals. Those toilets only get used if you know you're going to take a shit. And men do not give, they just could care less about a following person shitting where they shit. It's it's never going to be clean. 
because there's never just going to be someone peeing in there unless you're me because I get pee shy around a lot of dudes. I like to pee sitting down because I'm that guy. I like I'm that dude. That's like the weirdest characteristics trait I think a dude could have. Unfortunately, I was blessed with that gene. So you you get these just miniature toilet closets that are just disasters. So shit up against the, the, the inside of the toilet, the shit on the rim because some dudes are so fat they can't even get the butt on it. So literally the butt crack is up against the rim. You, the toilet paper is everywhere. It's hanging off the side of the toilet. It's on. It's in front of your feet. It's up against the wall because it, you, sometimes if you go to wipe your toilet, your hand gets splashes in the water. Then you grab more toilet paper and it gets stuck on your hand, but you don't want to wipe it off with your other hand, so you just wipe it up against the wall. On top of that, you have graffiti. You have just terrible things written up against the racist things, political things, just gang affiliation things, just up against the the the, the toilet walls. It's literally as it's a. Uh, it's a dirty penthouse for male sapiens, right? So you have these just crazy, crazy creatures. And on top of that, if you if you're at a sporting event or if you're at a uh, a, a rock sh- a, a music show, a festival, you also throw in alcohol, right? So you throw in alcohol. So now you don't even care, right? You're like completely disconnected. So you don't even care about what you do. So with that being said, we go to Starbucks. And Starbucks is super progressive, right? Which I respect. It's it's a good thing. I'm 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 very progressive too. Um, there's a lot of things that I support that I think um, a lot of people wouldn't expect me to support, but I'm I'm I like to think I'm a very progressive person, and I believe that everyone has a right to equal freedom. I believe that. There are issues that need to be addressed. I, I, I believe that the best thing for this world is to get as close to equality as possible, right? Which I don't think is a I don't think that's a crazy thing to want, right? I think that's a normal thing to want. Um and the one place I I kind of start backtracking a little bit is toilets. You know, I start kind of going like, I don't know. I don't think we need, I just, I think there's a better way. I don't think we need gender neutral toilets. And I don't think we need gender neutral toilets because of what I said. Because I don't think women know what they actually are. I don't think, I don't think girls know what happens in a dude's toilet. It's chaos. It's chaos. I started this podcast talking about tacos, you know. That food just runs through us, and we just throw down alcohol. We throw down coffee and just flies out of us, and we're apes. We don't take care of our bodies like women do, right? We don't do that. I, maybe, maybe I'm just completely exposing my toilet habits. She goes to the bathroom. We're at Starbucks. She comes out. She's like, Mike. I'm like, what? She's like, you would not believe what I just saw. I was like, what did you just see? And she... She's like, that guy, and the guy was still in there. Or as we're leaving, she's like, that guy in there. I, I go in the bathroom after him, after he walks out, and there was toilet paper everywhere. But he didn't even flush. I don't think he washed his hands. It was dirty. There was like there was pee on the toilet. And I looked at her and to so I'm having this like revelation. I'm like, holy shit. This is this, first of all, holy shit, this is a podcast topic. This is a podcast story. Because my whole life now is just to get content for the podcast. Um but I'm like, I'm, I'm realizing at that moment, like, this is huge to her. She doesn't realize this. This is something that she never expected. She, she had this idea. Maybe, I mean, maybe she knew that men were a little bit more reckless, but she didn't conceive. She couldn't understand that this is what men do, right? The wage gap needs to be closed. It needs to be equal opportunity for people. All industries should be paying the same. Women should be allowed to get uh, uh, what they call promotions, just like a man does. They don't. They shouldn't have to sleep with the boss. There's a lot of things that are broken with the system. There's a lot of things that need to be fixed with the system. There's a lot of things that I would vote on to give 
equality to women. I think they deserve to have a powerful voice. I think they deserve <laughs> I think they deserve to be on the equal playing field with men. I do. Don't get me wrong. I believe in all that. But what I think that they need their voice to be stripping away from and where they should have no opinion on and where they should not be able to have a voice on is toilets. I don't think gender neutral toilets are a good idea for health reasons for for argument's sake right so let's say we we my uh, Taylor and I we go to the bathroom and I go to I go potty I take a shit I piss and she comes in right behind me right because I, I'm I'm used to another dude coming behind me where where we just we, we are on common ground like yeah yeah you're a dirty pig right we're both men whatever you know we're, we're, we're animals we just try to control our our uh, natural instincts. That's pretty much our whole life is just trying to control our natural instincts and not like completely losing our minds. But let's say this day she, uh, she comes in behind me. She comes in behind me and take a ship. And I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting it to be a man. Like I said, um, that's going to lead to an argument, man. That's going to lead to an argument because it's just going to be dirty right here at the house is a little bit different because here at the house, I know if she's going to come in and even, even when I I'm consciously aware of it, I still fuck up. I still like don't pull up the toilet seat. I still don't like sometimes flush. I still don't change the toilet paper. I still accidentally get toilet paper on the ground. I still forget to wash my hands every once in a while. Like Jesus Christ, man. And I'm consciously aware of this. Right. And it's so bad. I'm so consciously aware of it that when she's not home, I'm like, I, I don't do the things that I should do when she is home. Like, I, I won't, I won't, like, open the toilet. Because I'm like, ah, she's not home. She won't know. But then she comes home, and I forget that, I and I didn't use the toilet again. So then it's like, it's just, it's just chaos. Gender-neutral toilets are a bad idea. That needs to be revoked immediately. It's a horrible idea. It's a bad idea. Just from a, from a cleansiness level. Now, if you guys can tell, I'm speaking hyperbole here, uh, which I know sometimes people have trouble picking up on. But I'm speaking in hyperbole here. But at the same time, I'm not speaking in hyperbole. It's a dangerous idea. If women, women should be able to do whatever they want, but they should not be allowed to shit after a man. <laughs> they should not be able to shit after a man took a shit because they're gonna hate men. They're gonna hate their husband. They're gonna they're gonna completely lose their mind on what being a man is. It's just a bad idea to save relationships. To save the way that we're viewed by women. Because look, 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 look. Men are already viewed like animals. I'm not saying we shouldn't be. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm not saying that we aren't animals. Because we are. We're animals. Right? You know how many men out there are just trying to, you know, get the, get the dicks wet? Like, most of them. Right? And I, I, I get it. Like, I understand why. The reputation that we have. It wasn't like we just woke up one day and we got that reputation. No, we earned it. We do a lot of weird, creepy shit. <laughs> like we're a weird, creepy creature. But if we can just find a way to minimize that just a little bit, just a little bit, I'm totally down for. It. So if you get anything out of this podcast, besides the fact that I'm a dog dad and I have dog responsibilities, besides the fact that you should go and watch that taco documentary. Besides the fact that Los Angeles Lakers and Los Angeles Dodgers are going going to win everything, I think that's not good for sports, but I think that's good for the cities. Um, if you if you just get away that California is falling apart as we're as literally as we're watching right now, California, the state of California, is currently going out of business. When 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 your whole when your whole economy is based around Hollywood movies, actors, people that aren't even themselves for a living, they act like something that they're not. And when that gets shut down, and when people start getting called out, like the Weinsteins and the Crosbys of the world, you have a serious issue on your hands. You have a serious issue on your hands. People are rolling out of that state left and right. They're still not allowed to open anything. The governor says keep everything closed. New York's the same way. The cities that are keeping shit open starting to open early they're doing well not a coincidence economically you have to start opening shit again you cannot keep things closed for so long once again 
just this is why I always get flagged on my videos and I always appeal it and they always unflag my video because they know that they're wrong. YouTube knows that they're wrong. It's a platform of freedom of speech. I'm allowed to say what I what I want to say as long as it's not hurting other people's opinion. When I say that we should start reopening, that's not hurting other people. It's not hurting other people. It's it's me saying that what the, the side effects of keeping things closed hurts people, right? And I don't I, I truly think you cannot stay closed much longer because people are going insane. People are running out of money. People have to work. Like when you re- so you realize when you close shit, the only people doing well are rich people. They only get richer, right? The, the, the poor people are like, hey, bro, I need to work. I know I just work at like a laundromat. Or I know I work as a cleaning crew at a gym. Or I know I work as a, a, a busser or a dishwasher. And I understand that COVID is killing people. And I understand that people are getting the sickness. But Jesus Christ, my, my kids are they're hungry every night. They can't eat anymore. They're starving. I need to go back to work. You have to take that in consideration. If you if you have unhealthy health um, attributes, you shouldn't you shouldn't go out in public, right? But th- then again, you should. If you want to go, who cares? But if you're old, you you shouldn't. But once again, if you want to go, you know, I just think there's a way to. I think the days are just completely shutting everything down. It's just it's not working. I saw a fact, I saw a stat that 22% of all the cash currently in rotation in this country ever, 22% of it was made this year. That is a, that is a terrifying number. Basic economics show that when you just print money and you give more money to people, the value of the dollar goes down. On top of that, if Biden wins or who who knows, who who knows, who, who whoever wins, if taxes go up, the poor are going to be paying taxes more. And you could put a 40% tax bracket on the rich, but they're going to figure out a way to get around it because the laws are set up for the rich not to pay taxes. The laws are literally set up for the rich to keep their money, put back into the business, and hire people. The taxes are designed for the middle class and lower class to help each other out because the rich class pays those people to work. You know, it's, it's the, the system is a broken system. And I don't know, I know like for the market, I'm, it's make the market the past two weeks is we're back at our all time high. Like it's killing it. But who knows what that means? Like who knows what that means? All I do know is that when you, it's like if you give people, look, if you give everybody a dinosaur a bone, and it's a rare dinosaur bone. But then if you give every single people person the same bone, even if it's a rare bone, it doesn't mean anything anymore. If everybody starts getting money and everyone starts then and if if people start getting fake money, they can't spend it. It's 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 a scary situation. I'm not an expert, but I wouldn't want to be I wouldn't want to have those type of responsibilities right now because it looks scary. And it's one of those things that if Trump wins, I think he's going to put it off again for four more years. And then whoever wins then is going to get blamed for it. Or if Biden wins, he's going to get blamed for it. But it's just, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that we just simply, simply don't know about. There's a lot happening that we just have no idea what's going on. We're just kind of rolling along with it. And I keep on hearing things like um, the archer fish can spit water up to seven feet to shoot down bugs from overhanging leaves. I keep hearing things like, um, well, if we get a vaccine, then we'll be okay. We'll be back to normal. But every time I ask people, are you going to get the vaccine? It's like, no, nah, I ain't getting that vaccine. I'm other people get the vaccine first. So even with the vaccine, no one's going to get the vaccine. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. And like, I don't know. It's just a weird time because there's a lot of truth happening, but then also at the same time, like this new thing, the new popular thing to do is to like be a conspiracy theorist person. So there's just so much chaos going on. There's our president's talking. He's up there during a coronavirus pandemic and he's saying, we have the biggest rockets and we have the biggest missiles and China's going to get in trouble for this. He's going to be 
Um, China's going to get payback for this. This is China's fault. This is a Chinese virus, Chinese flu. So you have like this dude who like gets coronavirus, right? He gets coronavirus. He, I don't, I don't know. Did he have it? Who knows? But he fought it off in like four days taking these things that we don't even know, like rent, whatever these things are, we don't even know what they are. He's over there like traveling in his car. Like there's just so much crazy. This is so much crazy shit happening right now. It's, it's, it's chaos. It's chaos. Who knows what's going to happen? All I'm going to say is, is if you have money, keep your money, save your money, invest your money, be smart with it. Cash, 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 cash. You need to keep cash on you. Um, if you have a job, don't quit the job. Keep your job. I don't care if you're like scrubbing layers of fat underneath of huge fat 1,000 pound humans. I don't care. Keep your job. Like keep your job. Uh, understand that your degree is going to mean pretty much nothing within the next five years because everyone's going to be fighting for a job and everybody's going to have a degree because college is so easy right now. It requires no skill to even get a degree. You know, are you, are, can you, do you know how to get to Chegg? Do you know how to get to Mathway? Do you know how to get to Quizlet? Are you willing to pay $5 a month? Well, there's your college degree. You just got a college degree. Why? Because professors are too lazy to make uh, their own tests. And then they're going to try to place blame on college kids for looking up answers. But they're, they're just copying, pasting tests and quizzes. Like, it's it's just, it's it's there's a lot of weird happening. There's a lot of weird happening. You're, you, you're going to want to say, well, you're going to need a degree because the degree is going to differ. It's going to be the di big different point of, of everybody in the market within the next five years. But everyone's going to have a degree, and no one's degree is going to mean anything. My degree, I'm, I'm a junior at Towson. My, the, my workload right now is 40% of what it was for juniors last year. In the same semester, same schedule. Because th there's, it's not work. It's not work. It's just not work. I don't know. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot happening and it's, uh, it's a beautiful time to be alive, but we're not going to solve the world issues here on this podcast. We barely, we, we don't solve shit ever. <laughs> we just talk shit. That's what we do, but that's why people like it, right? That's why people like it, man. Market's up 2% today. QQ is up 2.6% today. There's a lot of good happening, but it just seems all weird, man. It just seems so much like, I don't know, it just seems all sketchy, you know? It just seems like, I don't know if this should be happening, but um, I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. I know it started off a little weird. It was I was kind of not really feeling it too much. Um, Went to the vet, came back, and actually sparked like, I was like, fuck yeah, let's go. I like my new setup. I hope you guys like the new setup. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to continue with this setup. Um, I'm going to start having guests on. Uh, when I say guest, I really want Taylor to kind of be like a co-host, like have her on like once a week because her and I, we we really are good. I think we, we do really well talking back and forth with each other. And I think we do have a lot of insight on things. I'm not saying we're like the smartest people in the world, but I do think she's very smart. She's very articulate. Um, and I'm very curious and she's really good at answering my curiosities. And I think a lot of people... I think there's a lot of times where I have conversations where I'm like, man, if we were filming a podcast right now, I think a lot of people would actually enjoy this podcast. So we're going to be doing that. Um, I'm reading a book right now called uh, by Charles Bukowski uh, called Postman or Post Office. And it's apparently like one of the best pieces of literature of all time. It's pretty good. It's pretty dark. Um, but they say it's like the disgruntled uh, book Bible for employees, disgruntled employees Bible. Um, so you can kind of just imagine what that is. Um, but yeah, the next book I'm going to read is it's like the psychology of money. It tastes like the emotional side of money and how to deal with that. Um, but that's going to be it guys for me today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, episode 130 of the podcast. Um, we're killing it. You guys are the reason why it keeps doing well. And the reason why I keep doing it, and the reason why I keep on making these upgrades and I promise you one day it's going to be the greatest setup you've ever seen. Probably not. Well, maybe not because Rogan has a setup that a lot of people hate. But thank you guys so much for listening. I'll catch you guys in episode 131 of the Michael Lapp Show. Peace out. See you. Have a great, great, beautiful day.